Hey everyone, uh, it's Barry here. Welcome to My Virgin Kitchen. I hope you are well. Today, we are attempting to make chocolate pasta. Hopefully you've just seen it on the screen there. I want to thank uh, Elizabeth Rossiter uh, for sending this request via Twitter. Uh, Elizabeth's been a fan of the channel for a very long time uh, and I see her. I just like I see lots of you and this, I just want to do a little shout out to Elizabeth. Thanks mate. Uh, so I saw this and I'm like, I want to try it. Chocolate pasta. And it's exactly what you think it's going to be. It is pasta with chocolate in it. We're going to put cocoa powder in the pasta and I actually need my pasta machine. We're going to do it properly. All right. So I'm going to do my own little spin on the recipe that I was sent because they used all purpose flour. I'm going to go for the double zero flour, the real proper pasta flour. I might regret that. I might, but we're hopefully going to finish it with some pistachios and raspberries mwah, and a peanut butter cream. So maybe like a Snickers vibe going on, but you guys have already seen a preview if this has worked. Let's get going, and of course, all the steps are on my website, myvirginkitchen.com. So when I looked into it, you can actually buy packs of uh, chocolate pasta, but nope, we are doing it from scratch. I'm excited, it's a bit of a dull day outside, so it's a perfect day to experiment with this. Let's go for it. All right, I have just weighed out uh, some icing sugar, a small amount of that, and a small amount of cocoa powder, and then this is the zero zero pasta flour, really super fine stuff. So we need to pass this for a sieve, what? into a bowl. Yep. Just like this. Left with any big lumps, sometimes you get that with cocoa powder. It's quite delicate, they look like big butch chocolate boulders, but if you push them through, yeah, that looks really cool. Oh, in the last video of the vegan lasagna, I uh, intentionally put a little bit of flour on my ear. I haven't seen the comments on it yet, but I'm sure that would have annoyed some of you. It's always good to have a talking point in your videos, don't you think? <laughs> All right, so I've just made a little canyon, AKA well, in the middle of me flowery bits. That's the technical term, flowery bits. Bit of salt, apparently. Drop of vanilla, apparently. It's about a teaspoon. Notice how I'm saying the word, apparently. Apparently. Oh! <laughs> that reminded me of a Tolkien powder bottom. Uh, this is gonna be one tablespoon of chocolate syrup. All right, and now into there. This is my beaten eggs. This is three beaten eggs. And then we just start to bring it together with the fork, sort of lifting the flour in and mingling it all around. I actually do want to do um, a homemade pasta series. I've got bread making, uh, pasta, and actually English roast dinners. Those are the next sort of bulk ones. So we're doing vegan at the moment, which I'm absolutely loving. But one thing I'm mulling over is actually doing them at the same time. So we've got vegan one day, maybe like a freestyle request day for you guys and then uh, a separate sort of playlist sort of thing like this. I, th I really get the idea of making pasta. I think that's really cool. Homemade ravioli. There's a recipe in my second cookbook for ravioli, which is absolutely insane. If anything, it might need a little bit more water. All right, so this is cold tap water. Oh yeah, that's actually starting to come. There's a little bit flowery still. We'll add a little bit more. Doo -doo -doo. This will do. Big old chocolate slab. Doesn't look too smooth right now, does it? But we need to knead. Whoa. I gotta be honest, it's a little bit of a sticky lump, but uh, I've got a floured surface, so a bit more of this zero zero flour, and I'm just gonna knead it. It feels, if I can describe it to you, because obviously you're not feeling it right now. I feel it in my fingers, it's feeling a little bit rough, like sand. But as I'm kneading it right now, I can feel that I'm driving that smoothness into it. Kind of like when you're making a pizza base or something like that. So I am going to do this for a good sort of five, maybe 10 minutes. Depends how cheeky I'm feeling, doesn't it? But it's not very sticky, so I'm feeling confident to get both of my hands on, which I'm going to regret in a minute because I won't be able to turn the camera off. <laughs> Flour it down, so if it does start to get sticky, add a bit more on. But we're really trying to get that smoothness in there. This looks like quite a big truffle, doesn't it? And now I have a sudden urge to want to make a giant truffle. Uh, in other news, look, it's done. It's nice and smooth. We wrap it. Our dough is now wrapped, looking like a big old fat cookie. All right, so just a little floured area. All right, so that is one quarter of it, and you can see how much stronger that is after being in the fridge. It's got a bit of tension in it, ooh, yeah. So we'll just get a rolling pin and make it into a sort of rectangular shape. Nothing too crazy just now. But your pasta machine's got loads of different settings on it. So number one is the widest right down to number 10. We, as we wind it through, we'll lower the numbers down to get it thin. And the recipe suggests to get it to only five. So it's still got a little bit of thickness on it. 
Right, so that is on the widest setting. I've not used this very often, so I don't know if I'm gonna roll it and the pass is gonna go this way, <laughs> but I've got a board there to hopefully catch it or feed it through if I need to. Okay. Oh yeah, this is going well so far. And why am I taking my arm with it? <laughs> there you go. Looks like a little brown tongue, doesn't it? it? Does feel a little bit wet still, so anyhow. Next number down. Whoa. So there we go. I'm just gonna repeat that down to number five on there, and then we'll see what we're left with. It's gonna get bigger. I've got the pressure of Al Dante watching me. What I am actually doing is once I do one, I fold it over and then turn it 90 degrees and put it through again. You could just go old school and do it with a rolling pin if you want as well, if you haven't got a pasta machine. <laughs> yes, look at that. I probably could have done this step with a, like a pizza wheel or something. They look like little rows of chocolate bacon, but what I'm doing is once I've rolled them out, I'm just lightly dusted it underneath. They've got a bit of flour on there anyway, and obviously the seal pat or baking parchment is non-stick. This is perfect for it. So I'm just gonna make some more pasta. All right, guys. <laughs> this is a pan of water that I'm just bringing up to a steady simmer. Once it's there, the pasta will go in there. It should cook in three or four minutes. This pan, we're gonna make our sauce. So it's not on the heat just yet, because it will warm up very quickly. This is a, a pot of uh, double cream, about 200 mils. Uh, I've gone for some smooth peanut butter. Uh, obviously you could go for crunchy, that might give it a hidden texture, but we're gonna finish it with pistachios. Uh, so, <laughs> I need to get this off the spoon. There we go, nice. So about half a tub, so 200 mils of cream and about 200 grams of peanut butter. Now you're wondering, why didn't you get another spoon out? That's because you, where the tripod is right now, is in the way of the drawer. So I should have thought about that before I press record, shouldn't I? <laughs> So all I've done with that peanut butter, uh, this has actually been about four minutes later on the heat, it has broken down the heat from the cream, has turned it into this sort of nutty, sort of speckled cream, and it's gonna be gorgeous. So I was gonna get um, some Reese's peanut butter spread, because that's obviously very similar in tasting, but the color of it, because it's chocolate, I wanted something that would just pop that contrast between the uh, pasta and the sauce. Uh, so hopefully this will do that. I think we're there, that is smooth. I'm scraping the bottoms and it's clear. I'll take it off the heat and we'll just leave that to stay warm in the pan. Okay, we're getting close to adding the pasta. We're just gonna hit that boil and keep it on a steady simmer. And we'll chuck it in. All right, here we go. Uh. Okay. I was worried it might bunch together and I've been delicately just trying to separate it, but it's actually fine. Um, and it has floated to the top, which generally means it's done. It has been three minutes, but I'm gonna give it just a couple minutes longer. Okay, that has been five minutes. I've just turned the heat down because it was starting to get a bit of a strong simmer on. Uh, and look, it just looks strong. See this? I think it's done, folks. I'm gonna test this one off camera and we should be good. Just cut it in half. Oh my gosh. Yep, that is done. It's just al dente. So with the other ones in the pan, we better move quick. Al dente pun. Oh, yes. I might regret this, but I'm gonna add the sauce. Oh my gosh. I'm adding the pasta and I'm delicately just gonna stir that cream sauce around it. Okay. All right, that's cool. I don't wanna stir it anymore. I don't wanna break it. Let's serve it up. <laughs> this is so strange. Oh. There's still a few pieces in there, but that will do. Gonna grate some white chocolate on it. Is it me or is this suddenly looking really, really appetizing? Gonna grate some milk chocolate on it. I totally wanna experiment with this so much more. Oh my gosh. If I ever had a restaurant, this would be in it. I actually would really like to have a restaurant. A restaurant where I film it there as well. We'll get a nice dollop of creme fraiche on there. A couple of raspberries. Oh, <laughs> this is so weird. And just a few pistachios. Yeah, pistachios. This looks blooming amazing. Elizabeth, you're one of my best mates in an internet sense, all right? Nice one. I love how the heat of it has actually made the chocolate grating sort of melt into the pasta. Oh. 
I don't know how to eat this. I'm just gonna go like this. It's all about that, isn't it, surely? Oh my God. <laughs> I was just in the zone, like trying to summarize how it tastes. It's just such a fusion and confused medley of flavors. The plaster itself is actually quite bland. You get a bit of a chocolate kick, but it's the sauce that really does it. And I think next time I'd probably do something like salted caramel with it. I think it needs a little salty kick. You're getting the peanut butter vibes. If you like Snickers, that's good. But then you've got the contrast, the raspberries, the gritty chocolate, the pistachios. It's all good. I want to experiment with this idea some more, maybe as part of the pasta playlist. I'm thinking like a chocolate orange ravioli, but the actual pasta is orange. Obviously that's just my own idea, but you guys have probably got loads yourself, so do let me know and I'll probably try and bring it to life. Uh, follow me on social media at My Virgin Kitchen for behind the scenes bits and bobs. Subscribe and press the bell button to be notified of new uploads. We do at least three a week. And most importantly, if you try any of these recipes, do send me a picture, because I love to see your attempts. And they're normally better than mine. Nice one.